David attracted the favor of God because he loved God. He was after God's own heart. He knew how to write psalms that would drive out distressing spirits away from the king. That's the power of anointed worship. Amen. And I know we got powerful prayer warriors in here. And I know we got people that know how to do all of that stuff. And I believe in all of that. We may cast a devil out of somebody here today. It'd be all right if we did. Amen. But let me tell you where a lot of spiritual warfare happens. It happens through our minister of music of 20 years up here playing anointed worship music. Amen. I've seen it happen in this church, out there greeting people, coming in, feeling low and feeling fearful and depressed and full of anxiety, coming in here and just hearing and feeling the worship of Almighty God. Those spirits are driven off of people's minds and hearts. That's the power of anointed worship. When you learn how to worship like that, the favor of God will fall upon you. Praise the Lord. David knew how to fight. And he wasn't afraid to take on bigger enemies. While everybody else was hiding out in the caves and hiding out in their tents, a big mighty giant was out there challenging Israel and challenging the army and challenging God. Even Saul wouldn't go out and fight him. None of David's brothers would go out and fight him. He was the youngest, he was the smallest, didn't have mighty weapons. But he said, if I can take down a bear and I can take down a lion, me and my sling and my little stones can take down that big giant. And that type of faith, attracted the favor of God. When David could have taken out the enemy within, his own father-in-law Saul, David said, I will not touch the Lord's anointed. Instead of running to evil and wickedness, instead of taking him down, instead David chose the righteous path and the Lord favored him for it. He was not afraid to take on the enemies that the Lord said, go conquer and the greatest thing I believe that attracted the favor of God upon David's entire life was the tabernacle that he set up. You know, Moses, when he set up the tabernacle, everything was covered. It was a tent. But David, who really wasn't that smart, you know, I mean, he had his own level of wisdom, but you read his writings compared to some of the other ones, like Isaiah, who was so eloquent, Jeremiah, who was eloquent, Ezekiel, who could talk and talk and talk about the goodness of God and revelation. You know what David knew? Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. <laughs> Let's enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And who is quoted from more than anybody in the Old Testament? It is David. What writings appear more in the New Testament than anybody else in the Old Testament writers? It is David. David, even though it was simple, even though it was basic, but because he had the favor of the Lord, his ideas and his writings went to a totally new level because for him, worship was not just for a few, but he wanted worship to be done all throughout the land. You know what he did? Not even really with permission, but he said, we're not going to wall off the tabernacle anymore. We're just going to put a little roof over the tabernacle so that all who would come and see, they would be able to see the priest offer the sacrifices. See the priest go to the labor of water. Watch the priest go in there to the table of showbread and then go to the golden lampstand and then come up to the altar of incense and then, yes, minister before the Lord in front of the Ark of the Covenant. They could all see it and behold it. And God looked down and said, you know, it's not really the way I wrote it, but I like being seen by all the people. I want to be seen by all the people. I want my glory to fill the entire earth. And you read about it in Bible prophecy. In the latter days, God is not going to raise up the tabernacle of Moses, not the tabernacle of Solomon, but it is the tabernacle of David. And you and I are getting an experience of that right now. There's no veil up here anymore, but you and I are all walking into the glory of God boldly. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. David wrote Psalms. He said, when I pray, I like to get into the shadow of the wings of Almighty God. You know, the Ark of the Covenant, it had angels on top. Whenever that sunrise would come up, it would cast a shadow from the Ark of the Covenant upon the ground. 
And David knew, I'm not a priest. I can't get up there and touch that ark. I won't do that. But at least I can get into the shadow of Almighty God. My friends, that is faith that will attract the favor of God. When you just love his presence enough just to get into a little bit of a shadow of it, just to get a little bit of a touch of it, that's all I need. That's all I can go on. Amen. You'll attract the favor of God. Praise the Lord. David wrote in this psalm, he said, I look and I see my prosperity, and it was all God. He did write and confess that his life wasn't perfect, but he had hard times. And this is where the favor of the Lord really comes into a deeper meaning. He said in Psalm 30, God got angry, but it was just for a moment. But his favor has been a part of my whole life. You know what happened when God got angry with David? It was because he was unfaithful to his wife. David knew the wrath of God was there. When Gad the prophet challenged him, David didn't try to lie. He didn't try to backpedal. He didn't try to put the blame on somebody else for what he did and what he did to one of his own chosen soldiers Instead, he repented, and he knew that God was mad, but at that moment, he saw the anger of the Lord pass by, and he got a little bit of a taste of grace, and the favor of God kept him going. Praise the Lord. And maybe you feel like that here today. You've done things you're not proud of. You did things you didn't plan on doing. It just sort of just happened because you are at the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm telling you, God's great favor can overshadow that and cancel that, and you can keep on moving to the plan and purpose of God that you have in your life, because his anger is not forever, it's just for a moment. And maybe today, that quick anger of God is leaving your life right now, and you can walk in prosperity and blessings, praise the Lord. Praise God. David said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. A man who is prosperous, one of the greatest kings in all the world. He said, yes, I've cried sometimes all night. You know, he cried, and one of his children, who was not well and passed away, he wept over that child. But after he heard the news, he rose up and went to the house of the Lord and worshiped. He worshiped his way out of his tears and worshiped himself into the joy of the living God. And I've come to tell somebody, yes, I believe in what you sow is what you reap. And sometimes if you sow iniquity, you will reap iniquity back. But can I tell you, you may be crying all night because of your mistakes. The sun is going to come up and the joy of the Lord will come to you. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Hallelujah. The favor of the Lord was upon David during his weeping. Matter of fact, he said in another psalm, that God collects our tears in a bottle up in heaven. You know, David wrote about raising your hand and clapping your hands and singing and dancing in church. You know, you read about it in the book of Psalms. Nowhere does it say, worship the Lord with thy hands and thy pocketeth. (laughs) Sit stilleth, for the goodness of the Lord does not require you to get excited. Oh, no, but he said, let's get excited for God and let's move for God and let's do it all for the Lord. But he doesn't say in that psalm that the Lord numbers every time I raise my hands or every time I clap my hands or every time I bowed my knee. He says, oh, no, the Lord, though, counts every time I cry for him. You know what's going on? The Lord has numbered and bottled up all of our tears in heaven. It is the only thing about us, I think, that becomes spiritual. It transfers somewhere in the spirit world when you weep before the presence of the Lord and God bottles it up. It's like it makes tears more powerful and a connection to him. Don't ever be afraid to cry. It's not a sign of weakness, but a sign of spiritual power, brothers. It's a sign of spiritual power, sisters. It's how you get joy back in your life. It's how you get your happiness back. It's how you get your momentum back. Amen. You just may need a good cry in the presence of the Lord and attract his favor here today. Amen. But Jesus said, 
to John in the book of Revelation that one day when we get up there and we see him for the first time, that we're not gonna wipe away our tears, but the Lord himself is gonna wipe away all the tears from our eyes. He's gonna say, you've cried enough. There's nothing else to cry for. You and I are no longer distant from heaven to earth, but it's all just heaven. It's all just heaven. And that day is coming very soon when you and I aren't gonna pray to a wall or to a ceiling or carpet here when we kneel down, but we're gonna look at the Lord face to face. That's where the favor of God is leading. To be in eternity with him forever, praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But if you're dealing with loss, weep today. Your joy is coming. If you're dealing with grief, weep today. His favor is coming. David also said, the Lord hid his face from me, and I was so troubled. But his favor has made my mountain stand strong. You know what happened? David did something God said not to do. The Lord commanded Israel, never number the people. Meaning never take a consensus. But instead, when it was time for all of the men to appear before the Lord, they would bring a half shekel, a small coin, and they would toss it in a box. And then the priest would count the coins because God never wanted his people to be a number. Never wanted his people to be a number. But David wanted to be like the nations round about and wanted to have a vast, large army. And he counted all of the soldiers. And God looked down and said, that is not faith. That is depending upon your own might and your own power. God wanted to be the one who was the source of conquering, the source of winning. And God pronounced a judgment upon him. And at that moment, it was like God turned his face away from David for a moment. But he accepted the reproach. And he didn't complain about the judgment that came upon the land. He accepted it. He knew he had to go through it. But he knew that the good that he did for God outweighed the bad. And the favor of the Lord covered all of that. And he was still able at the end of his life to look and say, even though I've messed up, even though I've done things in my life where God got mad at me, even though I've done things in my life where I had to weep because of the loss that I encountered, and yes, at times it felt like God wasn't even there, I got through all of that, and his favor has kept my mountain strong. And Maybe you are like that here today. You feel like God's abandoned you. Like the psalmist wrote, that he has turned his face from you. Can I tell you, the favor of God will keep you going. If you're bearing the reproach of your sins, keep on bearing it. The time shall pass, and you'll be able to look in your life. Even though I made mistakes, God kept me strong, and he kept my mountain alive. Can you praise the Lord for it? Amen. Amen. God wants to do something good in your life. He wants to expand you. He wants to enlarge your coast. He wants to give you an upgrade. 